Well, colorectal cancer is the name given to cancer that is located either in the colon, which is the large intestine, and also the rectum, which is the very last part of the colon. So collectively, cancer from either or both of these locations is called colorectal cancer. So in the United States, unfortunately, colorectal cancer is one of the most common cancers uh, we see. Uh, there's uh, over 300 cases uh, per day diagnosed in the United States. There's over 130 to 140 cases uh, that die, unfortunately, every single day in the United States. That's a lot of people. The good news is it's a preventable disease. We have the technology right now to prevent colorectal cancer. Um, and we just need to make sure that everybody's coming in to get screened for it because that's the only way to prevent it is to get screened. The main risk factor is age and obviously that's something that we can't control. So the older you are, particularly over the age of 50, um, that is really the greatest risk factor for developing colon cancer in your lifetime. However, there are a few other groups or risk factors that have been known to increase the risk of colorectal cancer as well. Um, the biggest ones are, you know, any family history of colon cancer, particularly in a first degree relative, a personal history of colon polyps, which is why, you know, as adults, once an adult undergoes a, a a screening procedure to look for polyps or cancer. If polyps are found, the recommendation is usually to continue undergoing follow-up testing in their lifetime because the risk of colon cancer um, is increased if you have polyps. Certain populations, particularly African American people, have been shown to be at an increased risk of developing colon cancer. And a lot of people question um, certain lifestyle factors or other types of diseases. It, studies have shown that, for example, obesity, diabetes, smoking, and alcohol abuse have all been shown to potentially increase the risk of colon cancer. In the earliest stages, people may not have any signs or symptoms, which is, again is why screening is so important. But Earliest signs and symptoms of colorectal cancer can include blood loss, so people could pass blood in the stool. Um, it could also include um, unexplained weight loss, abdominal pain. And on blood work, it can show signs of anemia, which is um, a, a drop in the blood count. So the main goals of the colonoscopy are twofold. The first one is to detect cancer, but the second one, which I think makes it more advantageous is looking for precancerous lesions and these are the polyps that we talk about. In the last 10 years we've seen a huge number of papers that have basically linked the quality of the examination to how many polyps you find. We know that if someone looks carefully they should be finding these precancerous polyps in at least 25 percent of cases but ideally even more than that. And we now have that benchmark measure. It's called the adenoma detection rate, or ADR. And we have national guidelines that say you should be detecting these at a minimum in 25% of individuals undergoing a screening exam. The most important thing when you select a physician to do your colonoscopy or a group is you should ask about their quality measures. Do they know their adenoma detection rate? Is it at least 25%? And in general, the higher the better. Here at Mayo Clinic, we've been measuring this and doing a number of interventions to make ours as absolutely high as possible, and we're actually now up into the mid-40 percent range. Um, so our adenoma detection rate uh, is well above that benchmark, and, uh, and, and practices that do high-quality colonoscopy like Mayo Clinic should know their adenoma detection rate, and it should certainly be above 25 percent. So one of the major technological advances in the last 10 years has been the ability to remove very large polyps and a class of polyps called flat polyps. Um, 10 years ago, if you had a large polyp, more than say an inch or so in diameter, or a flat polyp, you were typically referred to a surgeon to remove that whole region of your bowel. Fortunately, in the last 10 years, a number of things have changed that have allowed us to now remove these large polyps without surgery. The endoscopes are better, they're more flexible, the optics are now all high definition, 
and we can see these polyps very well. We can predict which ones have actually turned into cancers and that do need surgery versus those that are precancerous uh, or in some cases very, very early cancers uh, that we can remove. Nobody wants to have their bowel removed by a surgeon if it's not absolutely necessary. And because of these advances in technology and our ability to remove these large polyps without surgery, um, you can avoid, uh, avoid that procedure. I think the main message that I would want to give to the people is that colon cancer is preventable. And that, you know, don't, don't waste time and take control of your life and get screened.